my channel and welcome to Tales of Motherhood with Ngozi. This is a series I just started and this is the very first episode of Many to Come. Um, you can already tell from the title of today's video what I'm about to talk about. Uh, during the course of uh, this series, I'm going to be sharing my experience or the experiences I've had over the years. And please, I'd like to sound this as a disclaimer. I am not a psychologist. I am not a medical practitioner of any sort. I'm just a mother who's had certain experiences along my journey of motherhood. And I'm here to share it with everyone in the hope that I get to inspire and encourage someone. And also, I'd like to use this opportunity to uh, invite anyone who has a story to share. Of course, we have tales to tell. We have stories to tell of our experiences. If you'd like to share your story with us, I'm going to leave my email in the description box below. Please send in your story and I'll be more than happy to share them on this platform. Now, um, this story is one that is very close to my heart and as a matter of fact, ever since it happened, this is the first time I am openly speaking about it. Okay, and for the sake of this, I'm going to, I'm not going to use her real name. I'm going to use, I'm going to call her, I'm going to call her Mercy. Okay, that's not her real name, but I'm going to call her Mercy. So I'm going to start from the very beginning. Mercy and I met uh, our first year in school. She approached me first. I was in class one day writing and she walks up to me and she says, Please excuse me, I'd like to talk to you outside. So we went outside. When we got outside, she introduced herself. She told me where she was from. I introduced myself, told her where I was from. And then she goes ahead to say that ever since she came into school, that some people have met her and told her and asked her if she has a sister in this school, if she had a twin in this school. And she was like, no, she doesn't have any relative in this school that she's alone. She said several people have said that to her and she wanted to know who the girl was. So she asked around and surprisingly, the girl was her classmate in the same class with her. So when she said that, I was like, you know, because Mercy and I, if you ask her, if you ask me, there was no resemblance. The only thing is that I was dark in complexion, she was dark in complexion. I'm slim in stature, she was slim in stature. But apart from that, facially, there was no resemblance. Anyway, um, we hit it off immediately. We became very good friends. And somewhere along the line, there was another girl that became friends with us. And the three of us became really, really close. But before she came along, Mercy and I had become like, we had become five and six. We become best friends. All right, now fast forward to after we left school. She got married before me. And then um, I couldn't attend her wedding. But I visited her after her wedding. Now, a year after her wedding, she gave birth to a baby girl. I never got to meet her. And then, in some mysterious happening, she lost her daughter. I had already gotten married then. I was living in Roma with my husband. One day, she calls me up and she was like, Tina, Tina, her daughter is dead. I was shocked. You know, she told me everything that happened. At a point, she started crying. I tried to encourage her. I prayed with her. I told her not to worry, that God was aware of it and that God was going to compensate her, you know. So years after she, after she lost her daughter, because that place they were living in, in Portaco, held really bad memories for her. So they moved, herself and her husband, they moved to Abuja. I was living in Lome with my family. I had already had my daughter, my first daughter. I had my second daughter. Now, all this while, after she lost her daughter, years after, she couldn't conceive. She went for a series of tests. She went for a series of scans. She was praying. Each time we talked on phone, she would complain. She would remember her daughter. She would be like, oh, if she was alive, she would be this old, she would be that old. I tried to encourage her and just, you know, just change the, the subject so that she doesn't dwell on that. Now, uh, after I had my second daughter, I think I remember my second daughter was about two years, was going on three. 
and we visited Abuja. Now, my elder sister, my younger sister, live in Abuja. So we visited Abuja. She visited us. I visited them, you know. And she recounted again. She started telling me the story of everything that happened, how she lost her daughter. And, you know, I just, I tried to encourage her and just try to change the topic somehow. So she told me about the sort of treatment she was undergoing so that she could conceive. Okay, after our visit to Abuja, we came back to Nigeria. And then I got pregnant and I had my son. And I think a year after I had my son, she calls me up one day and she's like, Tina, God don't do it for me. Tina, God don't do it for me. So I asked her, what is it, Mercy? What happened? She said, I'm expecting. I get belly. I'm expecting. Oh my God. I was elated. I was so happy for her. You know, I was like, ah, I think I tell you, say me, no worry. Say, God go bless you, you know. I was so happy. Then she had... Uh, the baby, she had a girl again. And then I think two, three years after she gave birth to that child, she got pregnant again. She called me again. She tells me, and I was so happy. This time she, she had a boy. Then about a year or two again, after that, she got pregnant again. And she called to tell me again. She was like, ha, Tina, another one do I tell. I was like, oh my God, I was so so happy like everything was complete everything was perfect it was just fine i forgot to tell you when we got to abuja i introduced her to my eldest sister so when she had her third child when she had the, the third child she called me on phone and she informed me i was so happy i was so happy everything was perfect then um you know when you're very good friends with someone and you go your separate ways, you get married, you got married, you start having kids, and you're not living in the same town, you're not even in the same country. You know, communication tends to dwindle. Not that we lost communication, we didn't lose communication completely. We we're talking on, we we're chatting on Facebook, we we're chatting on WhatsApp. Once in a while, she'd call me, I'd call her, and we would talk on phone, you know. Now, fast forward to, because she had her last baby in 2009. Now, fast forward to 2020, during the coronavirus period, I remember Togo went on lockdown in March. So, early April, my elder sister calls me and I pick up the phone. We're talking on phone and then she asks me, she said, when be the last time we even messy talk? Now, they talk so. I told her, ah, yes, so we they talk, but not be like we they talk before, you know. Everybody don't they busy now. We they talk, but not be like that. My sister was now like, hmm, Mercy know well, bro. she know well, she is sick. When she said, Mercy know well, she is sick, I was like, uh-uh, what did they do her? Which kind of sickness? She now said, she did battle cancer. She now said, she did battle cancer. I said, uh-uh, which kind of cancer? She said, breast cancer. Right after she had her last child. My sister was like, you know, say she, she born now. I said, ah, yes, ma'am, I know, say she born the third one. My sister now said, when she find out, or she just find out, say she get cancer all of a sudden. And it didn't only bad by the time she find that out. You know, when my sister said that, I was like, okay. So we talked for a while, and I was like, okay, let me drop and let me reach out to, to Mercy. So I sent her a message on, on WhatsApp. She responded, and then she called me uh, she called me on WhatsApp, so we were talking. When we started talking, uh, when she called me, I was like, uh-uh, Messi, how far? Long time. She was like, Tina, long time. I don't they try to reach you, see things, everything just, they happen fast. So I asked her, I said, what did happen? I just spoke with um, Amakana, what did happen? She laughed. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> my sister, I saw I see her home. Because when she, laughing was one of the ways she, she, laughing was one of the ways she dealt with things, you know, she laughed and she was like, my sister, and that's why I say, and, you know, so I started asking her what happened, how come you didn't find out early, how did you find out, she said she didn't notice anything, that she just wanted to breastfeed her baby one day and she realized that one of her breasts was hard. So she went to the hospital, they did this series of tests and scans, and they discovered that it was breast cancer. And by the time they discovered it, it was 
it was already it had already advanced it had affected some of her organs you know when she said that when she said that i was like wow you know i started to encourage her immediately i was like nothing will happen to you nothing will happen to you God will give you all these children, no go allow you to die. Nothing will happen to you. You will live to raise your you know, as I was encouraging her, she was saying, Amen, Amen, Amen. I prayed with her. And then um we're still chatting on WhatsApp, you know. Sometimes I will send her a message, she would tell me ah, uh, she was going for chemo. I think she said she had five rounds of chemo or so. Either three, four, five rounds of chemo to do or something like that. So um, each time I call her, she'll be like, she has finished this one. She's waiting for the next one. She has an appointment for the next one, you know. So um, some time passed and we didn't communicate. So I sent her a message on WhatsApp and she didn't reply. That was so unlike her. I reached out to her on Facebook. I couldn't get her. I called her line. Her number wasn't going through. So I was like, uh uh, this is so unlike mercy. So I called my sister, I called my sister up one day and I was like, I beg, will me you help me reach out to mercy? Tell her, say, I don't they try to reach out since but she not be respond. Make she come WhatsApp, me we talk, you know. So my sister was like, ah, even herself, she never see her in a while. She was like, okay, I should drop. She'll call her and then she'll get back to me. So I dropped the phone. After like 15 minutes, my phone rang and I picked it up and I was like, hello, how far? When I talk, there was a pause and then my elder sister said, Tina, bless me, don't die. The moment she said that, I went numb. I went numb, you know. And then I started crying. You know, I started crying. And I was angry at the same time. I was angry at myself because this is my best friend, you know. It shouldn't be my sister telling me that my best friend had died. I should be the one giving that message to her, you know. I was I went numb. I was angry at myself. I was like, oh my God. I stopped calling her. I stopped sending her messages for a while. I was angry. I was angry at myself. I was like, oh my God. How is it that it is my sister telling me that my best friend had a past life? I should be the one giving her that message, not the other way around. I was so angry, I was so upset. I was like, I should have called her more, I should have prayed for her more, I should have been sending her messages every day to encourage her, you know. I was so angry. I had questions for her. I was like, God, why would you let this happen? She got married, she had her first child, she lost that baby. And then for many years she couldn't conceive and then finally she has three kids and, and then she suddenly she dies like she only bottled it for one year. Her baby was barely one year when she died. I was so angry. I was so angry. I was like, but she was a good Christian, you know. She was a good Christian. Why did you let this happen? Why did you? I couldn't, I couldn't understand it, you know, that someone would lose her child and then for years she didn't have kids and then she prayed and prayed that you bless her with three beautiful children and then you take her away like, what is going to happen to those children, especially that last baby that was still breastfeeding, you know? I was so angry.
anyway, um, when she died, um, when I knew about it, I tried to reach out to our other friend, and I couldn't reach her. I sent her a message on WhatsApp, I sent her a message on Facebook, I called her line, her number wasn't going through. So, Mercy died in 2020. So last year, 2021, around November, towards the end of November, I made a post on Instagram and um, that our other friend, she liked my post. And when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, I sent her a message immediately. I was like, where have you been? I've been trying to reach you. What happened? And then she said she had a problem with her number, you know. Then we're, we're chatting on Instagram. So she sent me a message and she said, what about Mercy? When be the last time when you would um, talk? When I don't talk, I beg. As soon as we talk, I beg. I don't lose her number. I don't get her number again. I beg when you send message to her. Tell her say I get message for her. You know, once I got that message, I was like, oh my God. She had no idea. I was already getting over her death. It was as if I had taken 10 steps forward and all of a sudden, I took nine steps backward again. Now I have to start retelling this story. I didn't know what to do. So I sent her a message and I said, I tried to reach you. I couldn't reach you. Mercy no day again. She don't die. As soon as she got that message, there was a pause. I was like, here we go again. I knew she was crying. I knew she was crying and then she sent me a voice message and she was sobbing. She couldn't hold it. When I started reading the message, when I was listening to the message, I started crying. You know, from the beginning again, she was like, oh my God, she didn't know, she didn't know what happened, what happened. So I sent her a message and told her she had breast cancer. She only battled it for a year. She was like, how was it that she didn't discover it earlier? I told her, you know she had her last baby. She said, yes, she knew she was pregnant with her last baby. You know when you're pregnant and when you're going through pregnancy, your body, series of changes go on in your body. A lot of things happen to your body. And, you know, if you're a mother that, uh, if, if the, that pregnancy is not your first pregnancy, you tend to ignore some things. You know, you just feel like uh, it's just one of those things you, you go through in, in pregnancy. That was probably what happened to her. That was why she didn't realize that something was happening to her body. Something was happening to her. That was probably why she didn't realize it. She didn't notice it early, you know. You know, since she died, this is the first time I'm talking about it openly. Because, uh, I found peace and I've come to accept that it was God's will. It had to be God's will. If it wasn't, she would still be alive by now. You know, it had to be God's will. I've come to accept it and I know that God that gave those kids to them will, will find a way to, to take care of those kids. After she died, I called. I called her husband because her mom is late. I called her husband and I was asking him, how you guys manage it? How are the children? Who's taking care of them? The last one is barely one years old. Who's taking care of them? You know, he said, the, the sister comes in, uh, uh, is staying with them. She's taking care of the baby. You know, I tried to encourage him. I was telling him not to worry. He should please take her that it had to be God's will, like God knew about it. You know, when I think about this, I my my consolation, my comfort is that she did not die a sinner. She died a child of God. That's my comfort. You know. That's my comfort. If you are a mother and you've been through pregnancy and childbirth and uh, you came out from the labor room with your, your baby and you are alive and well, your baby is alive and well and you are both growing and you have the opportunity to grow with your kids and take care of them, 
you do not know you do not know the the kind of miracle you have you know for her she didn't have that opportunity all those years when she was barren, you know, she would always tell me she was like, Tina, I would like to I would like to born four children and I don't would like to get space in between them. I would like to just burn all of them once, then just take care of them once, then my body go rest, you know. Each time she we talked on phone, that was that is what she was that she would always say that I, I, would, I would always laugh and be like, ha, I work for you, you too much, or I bet me I don't feel just the bone like that, the bone like that, non stop. She was like, ah, now so I mean, I could just take one, one, two, three, four, I could just rest, I could begin raise my children, I could just not start, don't bump finish, you know, and now she's not alive to raise them. Our lives are taken over by all the things we want in this world. I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. We miss the little miracles that God gives us each day. We should learn to stop and think. And if you're in a certain position, you should be really appreciative and know that there are people who never got that chance. There are people who never got that opportunity. I pray for her husband. I pray that, you know, he will find closure and that somehow God will give him the grace to, to raise those kids. I've never spoken about this openly before. This is the first time. I'm speaking about it and I feel better. I feel so much better. I'm happy I got to share this story and I hope that somehow I'm able to encourage someone. Somehow I'm able to inspire someone to reach out to people. You don't know who is going through what and the kind or the amount of encouragement they need, you know? So yeah, that's my story for today. I hope you enjoyed, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please like, share, comment down below, and subscribe.